Right, welcome back and thank you for staying with us on KUTV Prime Time News. Now, as I told you at the beginning of the bulletin, you're streaming live this broadcast on uh, Facebook at KUTV Kenya, on Twitter KUTV and as Kenya. It's also live on YouTube at KUTV Kenya Live. Now, as the nominations continue in the country, the race for the party tickets is proving to be a tough battle. The spectacular rising of the sun, which brings joy to faith to the face of the earth, seemingly intensifies the tensions for the contestants who are yet to know their fate with the party tickets. The nominations neuralgia and how uh, in the how is the work actually in the murky political waters for ladies who are in seeking representation and that formed the basis of our discussion tonight and joining me tonight is um grace kanya who is an mca aspirant in kasarani ward so grace thank you so much for dedicating your time for this discussion thank you too i'm happy to be back all right. Yes. Now, um, the nominations actually, we're right in the discussion. The nominations uh, seem to be giving contestants sleepless night. And uh, now I'd really wish to know that uh, for you, how is this journey? And, you know, how, how have you been able as a woman to battle with the headaches, you know, and the tension that comes uh, with it? Oh, thank you, Ken. Uh, I don't know what you're saying about giving us headaches mm -hmm. and the tension and all that anyway. Uh, I should imagine that it is expected, mm -hmm. <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, one, the Political Parties Act states clearly we had the timelines for the nominations mm -hmm. and we are all prepared for it. And at some point or another, since some of us have watched or have seen previous elections, mm -hmm. maybe we had our own expectations and still the parties have their own expectations. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, I'm still a member of Jubilee Party, mm -hmm. and they know like up to now, mm -hmm. oh, we don't have a nomination date. Mm -hmm. uh, according to the party, I'm sure you saw what our Secretary General said last week, we may not necessarily go to the actual ballot mm -hmm. because the party has different mechanisms. They may have to work through the consensus or even direct tickets for people who are unopposed in their in their elective seats mm -hmm. but if it gets to going to the ballot the party is still ready for it mm -hmm. so i'm quite happy to say that at least the party has been engaging us on different levels like for me on an mca aspirant level mm -hmm. and so far so good yes all right yes now um we have seen uh, in the already conducted uh, for the parties that have already conducted uh, their nominations and uh, we've actually seen uh, people decrying of uh, rigging claims and you know uh, the issue of uh, direct tickets uh, some people are saying them some context contestants actually are saying that uh, the tickets uh, the direct tickets were issued without a consensus now that's uh, really what i really wish to know is uh, because um, for the for the for the disputed uh, party primaries there have been uh, f uh, fees actually that have uh, high fees actually that have been imposed for those who are filing disputes and uh, of course uh, there also comes the, the fees that was paid by the contestants during the nomination processes so what do you make of this the you know the the rigging claims and uh, issue of party tickets being issued uh, without uh, consensus. What do you make of this even as you are preparing for the nominations? Oh, I'm glad that you're calling them claims. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that you're calling them other parties. Right. So my stand is still the same. My mm -hmm. party is Jubilee Party. <laughs> We've not yet gotten to that point. Mm -hmm. But anyway, since I'm in the political space, and I've also not been blind to see what is happening on the news, mm -hmm. We've heard what other parties have done, and I'm sure most of the political parties that are yet to do the nominations, mm -hmm. they will really not want to go that nomination way because it's most of the times, as in even in previous nomination, or rather what we call party primaries, mm -hmm. there's always a winner and a loser. Sure. And most of the times, the rigging claims are always there, one way or another. Mm -hmm. And the exercise is always shambolic. So that's why I'm thinking most of the parties are going the consensus way. Mm -hmm. At least when there's a consensus and it's a negotiated consensus, mm -hmm. there is a winner, but there's no loser. Mm -hmm. Since we all agree to one person carrying the party's flag as a flag bearer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Now, uh, maybe still on that, uh, talking of uh, the consensus, uh, we can take an example of... Uh, 
MC Jesse. I'll call him with the popular name, of course. Um, when he was rallying for the South Imenti uh, constituency to be the member of parliament, earlier on they had a consensus actually, uh, and he dropped his bid for the MP seat uh, for the for the other, of course, contestant uh, because um, you know the deputy president promised him a job. But then uh, we are seeing the latest news today is that um, you know he quit that job he dropped the job that uh, he was being given he was being offered by the deputy president saying that he will be going uh, for this seat as an independent candidate and of course now that raises the questions in as much as yes the parties are talking that uh, you know they are saying that there are consensus when they are issuing a ticket to someone and for other people to, to drop their bid is there really consensus now that you're in the uh, in the political field probably you might be having a third eye than uh, what we have um, one, uh, you must be a believer in a political party. Mm -hmm. You don't wake up one day and decide to board a vehicle that will take you to nowhere. So for me, since I'm a believer in my political party, and mm -hmm. as I stated the other time, um, I believe in the mechanisms that are in place. So even when you see our Secretary General keeping talking about this issue of consensus, mm -hmm. because it's something that has been also communicated to us, it's something that is well outlined even in in our party conduct, code of ethics, and also the party constitution. Mm -hmm. So this is something that is well communicated to you. Mm -hmm. And as they say, the consensus, the, what we've been explaining and what I've seen happen before, mm -hmm. one, about the popularity on the ground. The statistics are already there for everyone to see. Mm -hmm. So the party has been having other people observing the ground, seeing your activity, mm -hmm. seeing how popular you are as a candidate and seeing how best suited will be when given the ticket to fly the party mm -hmm. the party the party agenda come august because we're not just talking about domination we're talking about getting into a contest that is coming in august right. how suitable will you be as the likely contested in august mm -hmm. then this is not what gives now the question of having to sit down with the rest of the aspirants mm -hmm. like in my world you are like five aspirants and we've had all these discussions. You have to see your strengths, see the strengths for the other person, and you see whether you'll get one person who is most suitable. Mm -hmm. And it's not like necessarily on the first meeting, you maybe you have to agree, because we're calling it is a consensus, it's an agreement. Right. And as you know, no one comes into, an, into a party election to lose. Like the favor of us, we believe we are all capable of taking this. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. someone has to share their interests for another more stronger candidates that to all rally behind mm -hmm. so as to be able to deliver the ticket come August. Right. Yeah, your vision has to be achieved by another person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whoever person is, we'll all come to one conclusion. Right. Yes. Now, uh, maybe if, uh, you know, the, the, the party primaries, because uh, for some people who have actually conducted uh, uh, the, the, the party primaries on universal suffrage, we've seen the kind of activities that have been going on there. And uh, we have seen actually in some areas the, the nomination uh, materials were being destroyed. And of course, we've had the rigging claims. And uh, in, 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 in the Nyanza region, of course, we saw the issue of... Uh, password you know when people are saying the the gadgets are already here but uh, the the password is not is 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 going to be brought by by a car or something of that sort so what do you foresee in uh, the august polls and uh, you know the kind of picture that uh, these nominations is showing us are kenyans really ready for a peaceful and free and fair elections um yes let me answer your last question. Yes, as Kenyans, mm -hmm. we are ready for a peaceful election come August. And about the party primaries that have been held by those other parties, mm -hmm. I really never wanted to talk much about them. But all this will abalu and all this happening, some of them may believe they are man-made. Mm -hmm. Some of these are things that can be really, really like... Or do I say this? These are things that can be avoided at all costs. Mm -hmm. We are in a digital age. Right. The same people who've been voting digitally for their private candidate mm -hmm. and showing the world that they are almost 80% of the population. But what happened? Mm -hmm. uh, the last election that happened, there was a low voter turnout. Mm -hmm. I come from a constituency where 
even like the person who got the member of parliament votes getting a party of 3,000 votes, mm -hmm. that was something to tell us about the party in question, one of the party that had, uh, that had uh, nominations last week. Mm -hmm. But in other parts of the country where the party has been claiming to have this big stakehold, it's also been the same thing. Mm -hmm. But I believe in my party. Should we be asked to go to the ballot tomorrow? I'm sure our numbers will be much more than what we see. Mm -hmm. I'm sure even our turnout will be much more than what we see in other parties. Mm -hmm. And just because we are on that, I know that it happened. And for me, I'm trying to forget about what happened because then I would never have interest in a party that is not my party. Mm -hmm. But at least have an interest to know that it delivered one vote for a young woman mm -hmm. that I cannot miss to talk about. Bomet gave us a 24-year-old mm -hmm. as a women rep. Right. So despite what happened, despite the the lack of ballot boxes, despite mm -hmm. the passwords, at least I know there's one lady aspirant who delivered. Mm -hmm. And we are so proud of her. And if she's watching this, I really want to congratulate her for that. So as we are ready as a party, and I'm sure we'll not have such issues. My party is really prepared for this. Should it go that way? Right. Yes. Let me let me join you in congratulating yes. uh, the young lady. She's yeah, that is remarkable. Yeah, total in right. its career. Yes. Right. Now, uh, maybe uh, again borrowing from uh, what we just said, uh, the law of water turnout. Does it really, you know, does this really uh, send a message uh, in the country when matters concerning matters politics? Does it maybe probably mean that? Uh, Kenyans are giving up, you know, they are losing hope on uh, on matters politics because there are actually actually some people who are saying that uh, some of these elections, the outcome already predetermined and uh, saying that therefore there is no need of them going to make queues, the sacrifice of time, the sacrifice of, you know, their resources going to make queues to try to, you know, elect people who they feel should really represent them when the outcome of these elections are predetermined. So does it really send a message uh, to, you know, in the country that Kenyans probably are losing hope on the elective processes? Uh, not really. When I take you back in 2017, the, out of the total registered number of voters, mm -hmm. only 58% of the voters showed up during the nomination mm -hmm. exercise. This time, I guess because of the coalition and so many other factors, we have had so many people have to shelf, some of them step down, then there are places where so many direct tickets have been given. Mm -hmm. But that should not be the case in August. I'm sure Kenyans now, we are having a group of young voters. Like, mm -hmm. I know the nomination, most of the database for the young voters who have registered maybe in the last like one year, two years, they are not in the database. Mm -hmm. I heard that some, the IEBC register was the one for 2017, mm -hmm. like for the just concluded party nominations for the other party. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing a situation where come August, we'll have at least a better margin of people who will come out to vote, mm -hmm. especially now in the general elections. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Now, uh, maybe let us just delve into uh, the national politics. Uh, uh, let us talk about the presidential elections, because uh, when you're talking about, of course, politics, you can touch on, you know, both sides. So. The presidential hopefuls have been given, they have a deadline that uh, by Thursday next week they should have named uh, their, you know, their, the people who will be playing their second fiddle to them. And of course, uh, you know, the choice of a, of, of a running mate. Earlier on we had people, of course, urging the, the presidential aspirants to pick ladies to be their running mate. And what do you see of this? Uh, picking a lady, do you think it will have an impact in uh, the outcome of whoever wins the, uh, the presidential uh, seat? Um, I am a member of Jubilee Party. And mm -hmm. Jubilee Party is in the Azimio La Umoja coalition. Mm -hmm. And I know you want to ask me whether Mother Karu is going to be a deputy president. Mm -hmm. Seated where I'm seated, no, I'd really be happy if I'm campaigning for my president with a female as a deputy president. Mm -hmm. So that would really, you see now, we've been talking about the two-thirds gender. But if it starts right from the deputy president, I'm sure it will even give us as, as like a sparing politicians, especially the new people in this political field, mm -hmm. it will give us a better edge and it will give us even a lot of confidence mm -hmm. to campaign for one of us. 
and it will give us confidence in even campaigning for a presidency mm -hmm. that has a female as a deputy president. Yes. Right. Uh, now, still talking on uh, probably who's likely, I don't want us to pinpoint a name, but um, from the suggestions actually that I've seen, uh, there is, a, there is a, a, a group of women, I'm just forgetting the name, unfortunately, but there is, a, there is an organization that, uh, you know, it brings women together. They were meeting in Eldoret yesterday for their 70th anniversary, and they were urging the presidential hopefuls to at least pick ladies to be their, uh, their running mates. Of course, the chair uh, for that uh, organization was saying that um, for the Azimio Moja camp, they have Charity Ngilu, they have Mata Karwa, and uh, of course, on the other side, the Kenya Kwanza, they were suggesting, of course, Esther Wahome as having the potential. Now, um, I don't know, there's also this aspect of, uh, you know, what regarding Gachak was saying that uh, the deputy president for their team must come from the Mount Kenya region, of course, but there also stakes on, uh, uh, you know, um, ANC leader Musalia Mudabadi. Now, if they choose, to, let, let's say that uh, one of uh, the facts, one of the one of the camps choose to go by the regions that uh, you know a deputy president must come from this region, but one of uh, the camps probably choose to have that one our deputy president must be a lady. Who has the highest chance to you know uh, amass more votes? Considering that, of course, women have uh, they have much influence when it comes to elections. But then, if we're talking of a region, there's also the Mount Kenya region. People are saying that uh, you know the Mount Kenya the Mount Kenya region have the numbers. What do you see of this? You probably someone goes for the region and someone goes for a woman uh, as the running mate. Who has the higher chances of amassing the numbers? I want to just tell you the name of the women group. It's Mendeleo Yawanawake. Right, right, right. Exactly. exactly. It's Mendeleo Yawanawake. Mm -hmm. And Mendeleo Yawanawake is one of the groups. You see, 70 years of mm -hmm. Mendeleo Yawanawake. Yes, yes. Championing for women rights. And, and yeah, actually. Both I, uh, in politics, uh -huh. in economic, in social, and in all spheres of life. Mm -hmm. That is Mendeleo Yawanawake. And it's celebrating its 70, 70 years right. of existence. Yes. Coming in during a political time. Mm -hmm. So that gives us more energy to even fight for more female leadership. Right. Some of us are products of the same. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are saying if we are given a female candidate mm -hmm. in the top there, for my party now, because I know I already have a presidential person in place already, who is mm -hmm. Raila Molo Odinga. Mm -hmm. But if we had had an option of having a female female party deputy that is a female deputy mm -hmm. from whichever region it should be a plus for the women of kenya that would crown our celebration mm -hmm. the caravan is going around it will be in mombasa the final will be in nairobi if the kenyan people can just give us that deputy president mm -hmm. and we get the votes not just a name but votes we see more women voting mm -hmm. because they'll see be seeing more women on the ballot regardless of where they come from. Forget about Mount Kenya, forget mm -hmm. about Nyanza, but just a female deputy president. Mm -hmm. That would be a plus for us. That would be the best gift for the seven decades of Mendele Wanawake. Right. Yes. Now, uh, it, it's good. Uh, you, you told me uh, the name. I was just forgetting the name, <laughs> but uh, of course, I, 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 quit my, I read quite much about it. Uh, there was also, of course, uh, the aspect that uh, the the members actually in that um, the group is uh, four million of course this would be a big plus yes. to whoever that uh, you know group would uh, side by but then uh talking still about women and politics uh don't you see don't you see probably um because in the party in the party primaries i've seen where l ladies women were were vying against uh, men but we've seen men you know Winning some most, in fact, most of these seats that uh, they were vying against, they were vying against the women. What could be the issue here? Are women not ready to be led by other women or something? I, I wouldn't really say that is the case. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a topic that has been quite sensitive, and we've always discussed about it. There's so many things that happen during the elections, especially where women candidates are in the picture. Mm -hmm. We can talk about the financial muscle. We can talk about even something like violence. Mm -hmm. If you went to a polling station during these party primaries, the tension there is too high. Right. I know one polling station in Nairobi that there was a police vehicle there 
you could see GSU, you could see COPS. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine even if a woman had woken up to go and nominate another lady and they see all that, they see there's going to be trouble. Sure. They just call back and they're not even willing to be there. Mm -hmm. We've seen men being for during those party primaries. So how many women do you think will even throw their food there? You have to be really brave and you have to be really determined to do it. Mm -hmm. But the women are ready for women leadership. Not mm -hmm. just in Kenya, but world over. That is what I keep repeating mm -hmm. every other time. They are so, this is the time, like, now Kenya is so ripe for female leadership more mm -hmm. than ever before. And I really hope that it's going to be really free and fair mm -hmm. uh, across all parties. And even the security is going to be announced. Because we've seen even the security personnel tell us the police have assured us of our safety. Mm -hmm. The police have assured us of even beefing up security. And I'm sure now, given that, the lady aspirants will be more confident to do this and their supporters will be even more confident to go out and vote for them mm -hmm. without any fear of intimidation, without any fear of even being harassed. Mm -hmm. And then we get the right candidates. And in this case, we get the right female candidates mm -hmm. who will also have a fair and equal chance of, of being in the, in the ballot box. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Uh, of course, uh, talking about... Uh uh, women, of course, uh, being, you know, when they are actually being at the forefront of uh, fighting for change. Of course, we are also seeing uh, in France they are also having elections, and we are seeing it's a it's a tight race for Emmanuel Macron, the sitting president, and uh, Le Pen, who is a lady. Of course, she is giving her a lot of troubles. Now, away from that, uh, talking about, uh, you know, now I want to talk about your journey in politics since the onset when uh, you began this journey when you vying for this. Uh, MCA seat. How has it been? And uh, probably given another chance, would you still go back to the same path? Would you still pursue your ambitions in politics? Uh, probably still rally for the same seat? Oh, yes, I'd say that. Despite the ups and downs, I'm sure I'll, given another chance, I'll still go for the same seat, mm -hmm. whether I go through the nomination or not, mm -hmm. and maybe I'll even go for a higher seat. Uh, my political journey has been quite interesting. I, I've been supporting political parties. Mm -hmm. I also supported an aspirant who won like I was in their campaign trail. And even the last election, there was an outcry that, why don't you vie? But mm -hmm. I felt I was not right. Mm -hmm. But I got into the political business. At one time, we even registered a party that was a secretary general, mm -hmm. that we never came to the full registration. Mm -hmm. So it's been a journey. And now I've been coming to elective position now being as an MCA, it said it's ups and downs. Mm -hmm. It's never easy. Once you become a politician, you become a Mwishimiwa, mm -hmm. even the days you're not at home, there are people all over your place. There are people following you in the bus, in church, in Matatus. Mm -hmm. But then again, I'm a people person. I just have a natural knack of getting along with people. So politics, to me, it's something that I enjoy. Right. I wouldn't even, I was even wondering, like, after all this ulabalu of politics, mm -hmm. when the dust settles down, when the fever goes down, mm -hmm. what what else will be there? Mm -hmm. It's an interesting journey. It has its ups and downs, definitely the financial issues, mm -hmm. the violence. Sometimes you're not even sure who is walking behind you. Right. Then the deceit is all over. Even not having faith sometimes in like the people, the other people are talking about the system itself. Mm -hmm. But given a chance, I'll do this again and again. Right. Politics to me is a career now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Interesting. Now, um, I really also wish to know what's, uh, you know, keeping you motivated when you're saying that, uh, you know, it's interesting for you, uh, politics as a career. I really should know uh, what's really keeping you motivated. And uh, it's also good that you are mentioning that uh, you'll probably also wish to go for higher seats. We could also mention the president at some point, of course. But now I want to know what is the one thing that uh, you're seeing in the country that will probably, if you go to the higher seats where you get to make the laws that, uh, you know, control the whole country, the one thing that you wish to change for posterity? Oh. Personally, uh, I want to be change for the people. I want to be a voice of record. Mm -hmm. That is what drives me. That is what wakes me up every day. I want to go do this again. Even the times that my drive is down, and I really know that I have a people that need a representation. Mm -hmm. I have a people that need a voice, and I know that I'm that voice for them. Then my energy is just rejuvenated 
and they want to do this over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Now, uh, maybe as uh, we wind up, uh, what message will you be having for the Kenyans at large concerning, of course, you uh, as we are headed to the general elections? Oh, mine is very simple. We all need to come out and exercise our constitutional right, regardless of whatever party affiliations we are in. But we need to see the numbers. Mm -hmm. We need to see people choosing the leaders that they want to represent them. And for my gender, all the ladies out there vying, I still want to wish them all the best. Mm -hmm. And want to tell them we cannot give up. We have to keep doing this mm -hmm. for the future and even for the good of our people. Right. And my parting shot would be quite simple, a quote from John Wooden. Mm -hmm. Do not let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. Mm -hmm. That is what I'm just saying to all the women out there and to all the aspirants. Uh, I, would I would love to say the, the women and the young aspirants, the new entrants into this field, me mm. being one of them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. All right, and uh, that's interesting. Uh, thank you so much, Grace, for dedicating you your too. time for this discussion. And of course, I hope we shall be seeing, having you more and uh, again and again. Of course, you get to talk about one or two things in politics and thank other uh, spheres of life. Thank you, too. All right, thank you so much. Now, um, that's been Grace Kanya talking about the nomination uh, neuralgia, the headache, tension.